Hello everyone and welcome to Danimal's House. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite projects I've ever completed, a dump trailer insert that can be moved from one trailer to another or stored on the shelf in winter when not in use. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, so here's a good look at our dump trailer insert. So first of all, let's talk about the why real quick. Why do people want dump trailers? Well, obviously they haul heavy loads. They're smaller than a dump truck. They can drive on the lawn. They can drive down the road. And they basically just save the, uh, all of the work of unloading the load that you put on there. Uh, dump trailers, if you're using it for business, obviously is worth it. But for an individual that really only uses it occasionally, it's tough to justify spending six to twelve thousand dollars on a dump trailer, and uh, so for me, only using it a few times a year, I really wasn't interested in doing that and taking up another parking spot in the in the shed over the winter. So my idea was to build a little insert that I could build light enough to pick up with the forks of the tractor and be able to uh, move that from trailer to trailer. I've got a utility trailer that I could use for hauling small loads like you know tree branches or just things that are bulky that maybe I wanted to haul uh, and then dump off. And then when I wanted to haul heavy stuff like a load of sand, load of gravel, load of topsoil, then I could put that on the bigger trailer that I used for hauling the tractor around. That's a tandem axle that's longer and can handle those heavier loads. So let's take a quick look at how this all is gonna go here. Uh, I made a frame out of two inch tube steel. I actually made a model out of wood to try to figure out the dimensions and uh, where I wanted those forks to go in and where I thought it needed a little bit of extra support with some 45 degree angles. And then I made the top platform out of also tube steel, but I had some heavier girders going the long way, like uh, two inch by six inch for to carry all that extra load. And the platform is six feet wide and nine foot six long so that it's wide enough to get through my doors uh, in the, the shed so I can store it on the shelf in the winter. Then uh, as far as the pivot point, you're looking at, uh, I used a couple of strut mounts for uh, cars. Uh, I think that top one, the bigger one is for a Jeep and then the lower one is for a car. And then I just made sure those holes were the correct size to fit a pin through. Uh, it's rigged up a greaser, and that is my method for pivot. Also on the top left there, you can get a kind of a look at what the sides look like. Uh, the sides are separate from the trailer for a couple reasons. One, uh, I could not find a way to make it strong enough to haul like 12,000 pounds of gravel without making it so heavy that it's hard to lift the thing with the forks of the tractor. And so the sides are separate because I can't lift the whole thing all at once. Also, sometimes you run into situations where all you want is a flatbed and having that capability to just have the flatbed, I kind of like. So with the sides, I just made that out of two inch by two inch tube steel as well. Uh, the face of the sides are 11 gauge steel that's bent on a brake. I took that into a professional place to bend those on a break to strengthen those up. Uh, those are bent over the the frame that was made. And then basically what they do is they just tip up into place and then those pins go through. And those pins hold the bottom from pushing out. And then you'll see where we have pins in the top to hold the top. So it all kind of fits together like a puzzle. This is a look here at the, the front Basically, those little uh, quarter-inch steel plates just go over the uh, front support there and uh, go through with pins, and it all fits perfectly. Then the front, uh, the front has some mounts for a hydraulic ram, and then also have pins. This is how I did the top. I I basically made it like little ears that go over, and then that pin goes down into the side to keep that top from pushing out and. Uh, that thing is rock solid. I actually had one version of sides made out of wood at first, and uh, there was just way too much pressure uh, pushing out on there, and the wood kind of bent and was tough to deal with with running screws in and out, and 
um, I realized pretty quickly I needed to use something a lot stronger and this is working great. This is a look uh, at how the RAM mounts. I've got like a 108 inch telescoping RAM that will basically just uh, run out three sections as uh, fluid is pushed into there and then that's detachable when I want to store that. And then the back section has a cross member up on top that keeps the sides from pushing out. And that's of no significance when you're dumping loads because uh, basically it will not get in the way. Uh, everything kind of falls underneath that I notice with my trial dumps. And then here's a look at the back latch. This one took a little bit of thinking to figure this one out, but basically it's going to have the little uh, kind of similar to a dump truck, I guess, where you can I can lift the back up and take the door off. And then when I want it to set in place, I just put it in those little C brackets. And then it hangs on in a way where when I'm not pushing on it, it wants to sit flat. But when it's dumped, it opens because the trailer is at an angle. And then when I want to latch it, I just put these latches in that are spring loaded and it keeps everything together. So um then as far as the last section is is to dump it to dump the load i have a pioneer fitting on the hydraulic hose so the reason i have that is for versatility if i'm hauling it behind the tractor i can hook it right up to the selective control valves in the back of the tractor and i can dump that using the controls on the tractor out in the field or anywhere else mobile and then if I want to hook it up behind a truck or a van, I can hook up this little uh, box. I made it, there's a battery powered hydraulic pump in here and I put that in a box with a cover and that'll allow me to go off to wherever I want and dump when I don't have the access to the tractor. So there's a quick look at the dump insert. Uh, I, I really had a lot of fun with this project. It was really challenging. It really it taught me a lot about certain things. You know, I got good at welding by the time I got to the end of the project. Uh, I got good at painting by the time I was done with the project. And um, this thing cost me about three thousand dollars to make. I mean, between the paint and the the steel, uh, all the welding supplies and the RAM and the pins and all that stuff, uh, probably about three thousand. But uh, I feel a lot better about it. I love the versatility of it. I can put it on a big trailer if I'm needing the strength. And I can put it on the small trailer if I need maneuverability in a field or in the woods or something like that. And then when I want to store it, I just put it up on the shelf in the winter and forget about it until the next time I use it. If I want to lend it to my dad, he can bring his trailer over and uh, he can set that down there and, and do what he wants with compost that sometimes he gets for his garden. So um, there's a quick look. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, please click. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next episode of Danimal's House. <laughs>